Hi guys, it is Carol from Lily Rose Blue. I have Arnold, Astrid, Amber, and I've put the triplets away in the corral for the evening, so I, I'm just going to let them be. That's just the best plan of attack at this moment. Um, I thought I would hop on and just tell you a little bit about my day. So today's Tuesday, June 4th. Um, I did work, but I had one of those very, very rare days anymore of where I could, whatever I was doing, I could watch some YouTube videos and and work or, you know, watch five minutes of a YouTube videos, pause, work, come back to it. You know, that, that kind of a day, which honestly, as I mentioned, is not, does not happen really hardly ever, but it did today and I needed it. I'm a little under the weather. I have been for about a week. I got some kind of viral thing. So um, if my voice decides to go south, I, I apologize. Um, and I am also uh, been having some issues with my back, low back and tailbone. So um, I honestly am doing this video just about seven o'clock in the evening after laying down for about an hour just to get that pressure off of the tailbone and low back. Um I was told, just as an FYI, if you have tailbone and low back issues, don't sit in a recliner. Um, you need, as my acupuncturist, my chiropractor, and my massage therapist all told me this. You know, there's a reason we have that natural curve in our back. And when you sit in a recliner, it forces that curve to go away. And if you don't have back problems, if you don't have tailbone problems, you're probably not going to notice a thing. If you do have issues, boy, will that aggravate it. And mine is aggravated to the max. And I basically got told no recliner for two months. Two months, you guys. And that was kind of my guilty pleasure in the late evening is I would, and of course I'm short, so it's very hard for me to find anything to sit in where my feet actually touch the ground, which that's a no-no too, which is why I love the recliner. And I would recline, I would turn on either YouTube videos or some TV, and I'd have the heating pad at my back. And that was my get ready for bed kind of routine. Excuse me. Yeah, I just made my life worse. And so, like I said, no recliner for two months. Yeah. And I'm not sure I'll ever go back to it because, yeah, just not a good, not a good plan for me. So I've been, I'm, been, I'm so happy with myself. I've been in my craft room a lot. Um, and it's, I, I'm not going to lie, and I think it's important to be honest. Sometimes coming to my craft room, crafting has felt a little bit like a chore. Or at the very least, something I had to put on my list and do so I could check it off. Now, I love crafting. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But for a while here, it has felt like a job, not like fun. Thank goodness that's over. And I've been doing a lot of ephemera. I've been collaging. I'm going to do some mixed media. But while I was able to work slash watch some YouTube videos, you know, when I would take breaks. I also took apart this book 
and I thought I would share this with you. So this is the Collector's Encyclopedia of American Dinnerware by Joe Cunningham. Whoops. Pardon me. I've got my phone plugged in. We'll come back to this. This is out of order. Um, I think this is from 1983. Oh, let me hang on. Sorry, guys. I'm going to put that in my collage. That end paper was great. Um, so it's collector books out of Paducah, Kentucky. Uh, it's ISBN 0891451994 and it's 1982. I was off by a year. So I'm just going to quickly show you what this book is about. Um, let me just, yeah. Well, we're going to move just a, we're going to move just a little bit. Okay. So what it, so it's got some great history. Um, I have watched a lot of YouTube videos in the last 36 hours, and so I've had a lot of inspiration. Um, this stuff here reminds me of maybe uh, what Angela calls chroma collage, or I know Wilhelmina was talking today about coloring, you know, lightly coloring in some photos that are black and white. And so um, those are the two that come to mind right away today. So I might do some of that with these. Um, it goes through advertising pieces and then, which is interesting, and then different companies. This is Blair Ceramics. Different companies, uh, pottery, china, things like that. So this... I am going to be pulling out, and I just need to do that right now. This is a set of dinnerware from the 1940s. So I'm going to pull that out and put that in my, to the side, to put in my 1940s. Um, big two-gallon Ziploc bag that I use for sourcing for my different journals. Now, uh, this book is very interesting. I think I've sh I have shared with you all in the past that I love dishes. I love pottery. I love dishes. And I know a little bit about some things, not a lot. I've learned a little bit, like, you know, like these back stamps, they call them. Um, things like that. Um, look at this. Isn't that fun? And um, I, I'm going to have to do some research. Oh, here. This says 1966-67. So, yeah, I'm going to put this aside as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is these ads or copies of the ads that I am absolutely going to use. Um, I love advertisements, so I'll either harvest this for advertisements or collage or maybe some chroma collage. Like I, you know, here you could color in some of those flowers. I mean, there's just a lot I think I can do with this book. Um, look at this page with all of those dishes. Isn't that fun? I I think it's I think it's fun. This is California pottery, so I I'm not familiar with California pottery as as much. And like again, here's those back stamps. Here's a reprint of a letter. 
um, about termination of the corporation of the Crooksville China Company. Um, there's just a lot of history and interest, at least to me, in in this book, and a lot of things that you could could do with it. Um, this is very. Um, you've got like a Victorian pattern down here. This is more, uh, I would say, Dutch looking. Here's another ad or copy of an ad. More back stamps. Um, just fun, fun stuff. To me, fun, fun stuff. There's a peacock. And as I was deconstructing this, um, Homer Laughlin, that might be a company you've heard of. I mean, I was looking but I didn't have a chance to really, really, really dig in to things here. So I've got a lot more harvesting, cutting, fussy cutting, things like that, that I need to do. Some of this also took me down memory lane. As they say, look at this beautiful ad. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. That almost looks like a poppy, but I think it's that other flower. I don't know. The leaves look like poppies. I don't know. And then, oh, like um, in this, it, that just screams a pocket, you know, or a tag. Um, just the, the uh, you know, the individual things there. Just fun. More back stamps. Um, this reminds me, it's not quite, but reminds me of the china that my brother and sister-in-law have. Um, there's some pottery, early 40s. I'm just going to put that over there right now. Um, cattail, I saved that. I'll come back and show you why. Um... That's some more of it, but just look, isn't this, I just, I love this. Um, for many of you, this is probably not your thing and that's okay. We don't all have to like the same things. Um, I have been thinking and I haven't made up my mind yet. You know, I could just make this into a journal. Uh, I, when I was harvesting this book I was able to in a in a pretty decent way sorry I've got to put this together it's driving me nuts and I was able to keep it pretty much intact the cover right so you know I might take this off and make this into a three ring binder um I don't know. I I've got to think. I've I've got to think about that. Now that one you saw, that one is the forties. This is forties. Okay, we talked about those. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Um, look at this. This is called Bob White. And this is by Red Wing Pottery out of Minnesota. I actually, one of Rose's and my daughter, because she was the coach's, volleyball games or tournaments in uh, February was in Red Wing, Minnesota. So I got to go there, um, you know, and then there's the Red Wing shoes. I did see that plant uh, for sure as we drove by. But so a Bob White is a, a name of, or slang, I guess you'd say, for quail because of their call. And I can't whistle at all. But when they call, it's like, Bob White, Bob White. And who came up with that? I don't know. Um, 
but I thought I would keep this back. I know it's kind of dishes, so that's kind of weird, but the fact that it's Bob White and Quail, I'm going to put this aside for my nephew's journal journals. Um, same thing with this cattail. I just, you know, if dishes can be masculine, I think that's a masculine um, icon, you know, the cattails, and I'm thinking of fishing, hunting, you know, duck hunting, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to set that aside for, for his journals as well. And then I put this aside, and hopefully you can see that. This just pattern just screamed farm journal or cookbook journal to me. It just, even farm journal more than cookbook. I, it just did. I think it's the color combination of the reds and the blues. Um, I, I, but I'm putting that aside and putting that in that pack. And then I wanted to just tell you a little bit of my own family folklore. Um, Western stoneware used to be called Mammoth Pottery. And this is in Mammoth, Illinois, which is where essentially I grew up in a much smaller town about 15 miles south, south, we'll just say south of, um, Mammoth, Illinois. Um, so in 1954, well, Western Stoneware was formed in April of 1906, it says here. And before that, it was called Mammoth Pottery. Um, so Western Stoneware has been a, around a long time. Some of you may know this kind of pattern and glaze. Also, there is the um, famous or infamous Indian head, which is like a gray-blue glaze um, or icon and glaze. And then just those big old crocs, huge big old gallon crocs. Um, a lot of those were made, not all of them, of course, but a lot of those were made at Western Stoneware. Um, so besides that being pretty close to where I grew up and having had the opportunity to go in to that store and tour the factory, um, I know a few times um, as as a kid, um, my grandfather worked there for a while. Um, this would be my dad's dad. And so I already like crockery, stoneware, the dishes, right? And then to know that my grandfather used to work here um, just makes it even more special. And of course... Um, Western Stoneware was a huge collect or a huge, what's the word I'm looking for? Employer in, in the area in which I grew up, which is West Central Illinois. It's also, it also was, um, it's part of the culture. It's part of the story of the area that I grew up in. And so I just, I, I, this was just kind of touched my heart a little bit today when I saw that. Um, yeah. Now I remember this. I do not remember the polka dot, although that's pretty darn cute. Pretty darn cute. I'll have to do a little bit more research on mammoth pottery slash Western stoneware for you. Um, and this, newspaper clippings were just a bonus that was in this book um and it's about francoma you know so a lot of us know francoma it's that the one that you think of the most is uh stoneware that is kind of a slate green with the brown edging on it um i don't think 
kind of like that. Yeah, this this is pretty classic Francoma right there. Um. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that book. I'm not going to make it a Bolo book because I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know how much that would appeal to everybody, you know, or to a large majority of people. But I thought it. I thought it was fun and I thought I'd hop on and share. The other thing that I wanted to um, just tell you about, just because it's fun, um, I think I already said that tomorrow is the last day of school for all three of the grandkids. Um, the one that lives here and the two that are in Minnesota. Um, never before have they ended on the same day. Uh, typically, the Minnesota kiddos end up going at least three or four more days um, than, than here. And usually that's because of snow days, right? Um, but here we are. They're getting out on the same day. Um, I cannot believe that I have a... And there's a word for it. Ascending is not it, but that's the word I'm gonna gonna use. An ascending junior in high school, and ascending sixth graders, which um, will be a middle school for them. Um, yeah, I'm not getting any older. Gosh darn it! How are they? Just I I I don't understand this. And then the other fun thing that I thought I would share, and I'll just bring out Astrid and Arnold here to keep you entertained, is that, and you guys know I feed the birds and that I love deer and that we have deer that come up and eat. Well, usually the deer don't come and eat until, you know, later, like dark, at least dark, and sometimes later. I've seen them, um, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning would not be unusual. However, when you start to see deer come up in your yard in the broad daylight, um, I'm coming to learn this. This is the third or fourth year in a row that we've had a mama deer. And, you know, they're coming to eat after they have their fawn. They leave their fawn in what they believe is a secure place, although I know that they can leave fawns in some really weird places. And then they will go get nourishment because, you know, they're now feeding a, feeding a baby. They need food. Um, when the family was out last, the Sunday of Memorial weekend, uh, we were out doing yard games and all of a sudden we saw this fawn just race through the yard and go across the street. I'm like, okay, all right. Um, so I've kind of been watching. And then yesterday morning, yes, I think it was yesterday morning or the morning before, Sunday or Monday morning uh, at five o'clock, my husband was up and apparently was looking outside and he saw a mama deer and a fawn. Um, so, you know, we made this assumption that, oh, okay, there's the mom and the fawn, you know, that, you know, that's the fawn that we saw um, on a week ago Sunday. Well, last night, uh, we're sitting at the kitchen table eating dinner, and I look over at my neighbor's house across the street, and there is this beautiful mama deer, just the coloring is gorgeous. And an itty bitty fawn, like itty bitty, like maybe a foot and a half by maybe a foot and a half tall, itty bitty. And uh, so the mama deer looked different and the fawns looked different ages to us. So we think we have two mama deer and two fawns in our neighborhood. So I'm very excited. I am double feeding. I usually would only put food out for the birds and squirrels in the morning. And then 
at night I would put out corn, carrot, apples, something like that for the deer. And then they would eat whatever bird seed was left over. And of course, sometimes would eat the bird seed out of my feeders. Um, so now though, I'm, I'm feeding essentially three times a day, morning, early afternoon with bird seed and things. And, and then nighttime, this, you know, the apples, carrots, corn, peanuts, seeds, things like that. Um, I'm also very much, um, I have a big, a bigger bird bath that I keep full of water and I've been filling that twice a day as well. And my neighbor across the street is doing the same thing because, you know, they need, they need to drink and nothing is, I mean, deer are beautiful, but I have to say when the squirrel squirrels stretch and their little tongues come out to drink the water in the bird bath, oh my gosh, that's adorable. It's so cute. It's, it's so cute. Anyway, I also caught last night, I caught one of the deer drinking my hummingbird food, nectar, out of my hummingbird feeder when they had fresh water right there. So now they're drinking my hummingbird nectar. I'm like, okay, well, that's going to get expensive. Um, anyway, just thought I'd share that, those stories. Um, it tickles me that I have mama deer and baby deer or fawns, you know, in my neighborhood. Um, it's, they're just beautiful animals and so fun to watch. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my story. So yeah, Arnold and Astrid helped tell my story. Uh, so thank you to them. Thank you all for watching this video. Um, eh, content, I don't know. Did you learn anything? Probably not. Um, but I thought I'd share. Um, and I thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back um, and listening to the craziness that is me. Um, hit like, hit subscribe, comment whatever you would like. I really appreciate you all. And please, 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 everybody take care, stay safe, have some fun, and God bless. Bye-bye.